so uh after a hard day of databases and uh everything else uh <laughs> i like to uh do some open scared programming and this is uh quite different from normal programming uh it's a language for doing uh, computer geometry like a CAD program but rather than using a mouse cursor and dragging out boxes and <clears throat> typing in relationships uh, OpenSCAD is a programming language where you write code to do essentially the same thing so I've recently been um, trying to improve my setup for video streaming and so I have a mic over here which is a little bit better and uh, when I got a better mic I realized how noisy everything was so <laughs> even my keyboard has like got some kind of um, PWM noise or something going on so uh, I got new fans <clears throat> and it was then that I found out that uh, my case well the CPU is great but the, the GPU is quite noisy and the reason why the GPU is noisy is because the fans uh, it gets to about 57 degrees with the fans off and then the fans spin up maybe for like 10 seconds, the temperature goes down to like 55 degrees, and then the fans switch off and it just does that over and over and over again. Um, so I've been thinking about ways to like solve this problem. Uh, and one of the ones that uh, I thought was the Noctua fans that I bought, they're much quieter than the GPU fans. So why not use them to uh, try and, you know, when the system is mostly idle, keep the GPU temperature a bit lower by blow, having one fan blow across the GPU. The problem is, uh, so I have a pretty old fractal design R4 and it has this hexagonal grid pattern and it's super noisy. I'll try and show it in a moment. I don't quite understand uh, air dynamics and why that is the case, but basically it seems like when you pull air through a hexagonal grid like this, uh, there must be some kind of vibration or um, <clears throat> sort of, uh, yeah, it should be honest, I, I really have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, it just creates a huge amount of noise. And so I'm trying to figure out uh, a better way of doing this. The first thing that came to my mind was cutting, like literally getting a 140 mil hole saw from China or something and cutting this out. Because without without this grid in front of it, it's, it's quiet, it's super quiet. And I could just put um, one of those kind of circular uh, grills in front of it. But I'm not quite sure what the best option is. So I thought um, maybe I can 3D print something that will help direct airflow to the GPU. So let me show you what it looks like. I, just see, I don't know if any of this is, is going to work, but we'll try pulling the camera down here. And you probably can't hear me that well, but here's my computer and there's my GPU and there's this 140 mil fan sitting in front of it at the moment. And you probably can't hear it. Actually, you probably will be able to hear it because it's so noisy. Holding a camera and a fan and everything else at the same time. So the, the microphone is quite far away, but oh, you can hear the GPU fan as well. Um, so what I want to do is I want to, uh, I've just been sitting the fan literally inside the case like that. And that, that was actually enough to keep the temperature um, around 40 to 45 idle on, on the GPU with no fans at all, just that one knock to a fan. So I want to build a ducting which allows me to attach the fan to that panel, that grill there, and then spreads it out across the GPU so it's going to... I think what I found was if I blow out through that mesh, it's not so bad. It's when I suck air through it that it's a problem. So I'm going to experiment a little bit, but um, I think I'm going to build a ducting which lets me attach the fan and probably pull air through the fins of the GPU heatsink. Um, so I can probably 3D print that. I think it's... I think it will be within the limitations of my size. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's have a look at OpenSCAD because this is pretty fun stuff anyway. 
Excellent. So I've done some measurements already, and the center of the grill is um, it's offset. So let's just put in those measurements. So it's 145 mils on the x-axis from the back of the case. And it is 185 mils up from the bottom of the case. That's the panel. And then I figured out the GPU is roughly where I want to have the ducting uh, deliver air or suck air from those fins on the GPU. Uh, Um, it's 40 mils in and it goes all the way to 240 mils and from the bottom of the case up let's put X first it is 200 mils to the bottom and 210 mils to the top so these uh, measurements what's what I really like about OpenSCAD is it's fully parametric. So when, you, um, when you're building parts for your particular problem, you can use constants at the top of your file or, or even use modules, which are kind of like functions, and they take in arguments. And so you don't necessarily have to design your model or your part for some exact specifications, but you can make them all parametric, like thicknesses, widths, heights, depths, all that kind of stuff can just be parametric. And you can write documentation about how to use it and, and so on. So um, nothing is really lost, but a lot is gained because if you went and bought a different GPU or if you moved it to a different slot, you know, different PCI slot, then you could probably just adjust some of the parameters without having to, you know, rebuild the whole thing from scratch, uh, which is would be typical. I mean, like really advanced, um, CAD software, can, you know, does have parametric functionality, but as a programmer, I just love writing code. It just feels way more natural to me. So, so I have some. Um, these are like includes. These are other files which um, have stuff in them that I've already written in the past. This one called bolts.scad. Uh, it lets me do um, ISO standard uh, holes. So like uh, an example would be a countersunk bolted hole. Uh, with 3D printing, you often find the need to insert a nut into your part so you can bolt pieces together. So uh, this is just a library of modules which lets me do that really easily. I can provide arguments like the diameter, the depth, the offset to the nut and so on and so forth. Uh, this is a module which I've pulled from, um, I've been trying to build a, my own computer case, and this is a module that I pulled out of that code that just lets you do the standard uh, fans and it has the correct spacing and stuff for where the hole should be. And this is uh, a module for doing cubes. Uh, it's called them Z cubes because they're centered on the Z axis, um, which makes them pretty convenient for uh, when you're dealing with centers and sizes rather than minimums and maximums. Excellent, okay, so Let's come back to our source code, which is here. We're going to pull in that code. And nothing happens on the preview window, but let's, let me show you how you could use this. Um, I wonder if that renders anything. I probably need to provide some arguments. So let's give it a size 10 by 10 by 20. And there is my cube, 10 by 10 by 20 millimeters. Actually, it can be whatever unit you want, but I tend to work in millimeters. Uh, right, so <clears throat> I started working on this this afternoon and I just, I realized this would be a video, this is like a live stream I wanted to do it for so long, talking about OpenSCAD. I don't know if many people really know what it is or how to use it or how powerful it is. So I just thought it's such an opportunity to demo it and ha and to kind of uh you know people do like live music and they write code and they produce music in real time well this is you write code and you produce like 3d geometry in real time um so it's 
not all that different, um, but it's a kind of live coding, you know, unlike say writing C++ or Ruby where you kind of write it and then you have to run it or, you know, some other system is dealing with it. Um, excellent. So let's start off. Uh, what I need is I need something to mount the fan onto. And the fan is going to be um, probably mounted to the side of the case. So <clears throat> it's a 140 millimeter fan. And we just want this bracket to be really thin. Maybe like two mils is enough. Now, um, in Z cube, there is a different one called R cube, and that just means a rounded cube. So I'm going to use that. And we need to specify a radius. Or is it diameter? Oh, it's diameter. There we go. So now we have some curved, curved edges. It just does that by putting four cylinders and making a hull out of them. A hull just uh, creates a union of the geometry um, by sort of like wrap, like shrink wrapping around all the component pieces. So it basically makes one cylinder in each corner. And if you imagine shrink wrapping over that, you'd end up with that shape. Now we want to add uh, holes in this for the fan to mount onto it. Uh, so we're going to make a difference. And we're going to take the original shape and we're going to subtract out of it uh, the fan holes. Now I have uh, a module in here called fan holes. And all it does is it takes in the diameter of the fan, the spacing, and then it basically in the four corners at the right place, it, at the center of, of the right place, it calls it does this thing called children, and it basically just renders like whatever child you specify. So we're going to basically go fan holes, and it's gonna we're gonna take actually um, someone is interrupting me. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take that hole and we're going to put that there. So that becomes children and it gets done four times once in each corner. Did it work? Something is uh, Z equals 10. I don't want any translation. So that is a, um, that is a bracket that will mount. Let me just grab the kind of fan we're dealing with. So we have uh, this kind of fan here, and that's what we wanna we wanna attach to that. So we've made a panel that will fit fit, fit to that approximately. Is this oriented? It doesn't really get. Yeah. Hmm. It's confusing because it's reversed. Yeah, it should be like this. There we go. That's roughly this, the the geometry. So the next thing is obviously if we attach a fan to this panel, uh, it's gonna have some problems because there's nowhere for the air to go. So we also need to take out of there a 140 millimeter cylinder. So we can just keep on adding stuff in here. It's the first object minus all the subsequent ones. And if you ever get confused about what it is that you're doing, you can put this hash symbol in front of it and it will highlight. Um, even though the object is subtracted, it will still show you the original object that did the subtraction. Uh, and the diameter is 140. And the height in this case is going to be two. Ah, missing semicolon. So it looks good. So because OpenSCAD, uh, the preview, um, interestingly enough, so it uses OpenGL, uh, but it actually does, to be really quick when you're doing this incremental editing, it actually uses the Z buffer to do these boolean operations which i think is really amazing and so you get z fighting um like this but you, you don't have to worry about it that much um it's actually not that bad it's just uh it's, it's due to precision issues i guess in the gpu and 
I don't personally have a problem with it. Very occasionally, if you do complicated transforms, you will have issues where the final model has like very thin slivers. And if that's a problem, often the slicer will ignore them because they're too thin. But that being said, if you do get concerned about this, you can make the height four and you can translate this by zero, zero, negative two. Did I get that right? Uh, minus one. So now it's perfect because that cylinder actually extends above and below slightly so that the cutter is just uh, pretty much perfect. Um, I, I sometimes do this, like we'll just leave it because I've done it, but sometimes it makes the math more complicated because your translations are a little bit off by one mil or something. I mean, it could be, you could just do it by 0.1 mil, it would be sufficient. Um, but frankly, uh, I don't bother with it that often because uh, it doesn't really make a difference in practice. Right, so we have this. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on this axis. And this is as if we're looking at the side of my computer and this origin here is the back, uh, the bottom and back of my computer. And so like the GPU is positioned like roughly here. Uh, you know, the CPU is up here somewhere. Uh, the front of the case is over this side. So I need to move this into place. But before I do that, I'm gonna make this into a module. Um, so I'm gonna call this uh, bracket. And we're gonna invoke that module so it still shows up. Now we're gonna translate this into place. I wonder if I can just do this. Does this work? I don't think it does. Ah, oh, that works. Perfect. Even though there's no Z components, just assumed it was zero, I guess. So now that is, it is coming out on the positive Z axis, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about that at the moment because there's, it doesn't have to be a tight fit, or at least right now I'm not too concerned about that, um, how it extends back into the case. But we will um, start there. Right, so the next part is the duct. So the duct is basically going to be a some like a, a hollow um, kind of tubing that goes from where the fan mounts and tries to spread that uh, airflow out to all the grill of the GPU. Now I made these measurements. Um, and this is on the x-axis. So we have about a one centimeter gap where the grill is, and it starts from about uh, four centimeters from the back of the case and goes along to 24 centimeters. So let's just put another, hmm, what's the easiest way to do this? ZQ probably easiest. Because to make a duct, we're gonna have to hollow out the inside in a ZQ because everything stays centered we can just take the size and subtract a mill or two off it to get a hollow uh, that we can that we can uh, use and attach. Okay, so Z cube. So what we want is we want to make the size, the width should be, hold on, yeah, X. Have I got this numbers right? No, I think. These are backwards. Let me write the way around, it'll be easier. So the width is going to be GPU one minus GPU zero. The height is going to be GPU three minus GPU two. And the depth, uh, we're just going to make it um, one mil. One mil is probably enough, maybe two mils. Uh, okay, that should give us an elongated Thing to start with. So that's about right. Um, and we want to position it in the right place. So let's uh, 
Oh yeah, and it's the center. So we actually need, it's a good, hmm. Okay. Uh, there should be a simple way of doing this. I think that's probably about right. Yeah, the GPU is basically in that area. So as you can probably hear, my GPU fan is revving up. So this is, what I measured was uh, from the wall of my case to the GPU itself is about seven centimeters plus or minus about five mils. And the, Fan is 2.5 centimeters thick. And what else? Uh, there's gonna be a few other bits and pieces in there. So I figured about 40 mils is probably about right. So let's put this back about 40. So that's roughly, it's actually quite, quite small. Um, maybe we'll end up making it bigger at some point. The key point is, the fan is super noisy when pulling uh, when pulling air through that hexagonal patterned uh, mesh on the case wall. But when I turn it the other way around, it wasn't anywhere near as bad. So what I thought was, if I can make this ducting sit right on top of the GPU, uh, the GPU like the cooling fins, then if I make it suck, I can hopefully try and suck air through those fins and probably that's enough. But again, like it's 3D printer, you just try like 50 different ways and eventually one of them works hopefully. So I'm, I'm okay to prototype this and see what happens. Right, so we wanna build a ducting and the other part of this ducting is uh, just the cylinder. Oh, we need to translate that. Uh, we want to translate it by that much. Oh wow, well, it's pretty strong. Oh okay, yeah, right. So now we have that, and we don't want that actually to be. We don't want that. Oh yeah, that looks good to me. So now this is kind of where the cool thing, the cool magic starts happening. Um, sometimes I get super confused about what mouse axis does what. There we go, I kind of want to see that. So if we put that whole lot in there, that basically builds our duct. But of course that's solid at the moment. There's no, um, we obviously couldn't blow air through that if we 3D printed it to be a solid object. So we need to make it hollow. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is, an idea just came to me of a simple way of doing this than what I was doing before, but. Uh, So using a scale factor for this kind of thing doesn't produce walls of consistent thickness. So it's not a scale factor, but it's some kind of like offset. Um, and what we're gonna do is we are going to add that offset to that one and we are gonna, hmm, hold on. Will this translation be a problem? No, because it's the center, it should be fine. 
Oh yeah, right. And then what we want is maybe calling this module duct is also a little bit confusing because it's no longer a duct. It's more like a uh, why is naming stuff so complicated? It's, it's not the duct. It's just like the solid bit of the duct. It's the shape of the duct. Uh, <laughs> this is a terrible name, duck shape. Okay, well, I can live with that. Uh, module duct, and then we're gonna go difference between duct shape and duct shape with a minus two offset. Now, what? Have I done wrong? Ah. Okay, this is looking better. Now, one way you can avoid this is you can just go put rend in front of there, and it will um, it will, it won't use the it, it will basically build the geometry rather than trying to render it using the z buffer. So I am pretty happy with that. Um, it's probably possible to 3D print that now. So I guess it's always a case of um, what measurement did I stuff up <laughs> at this point. Uh, you know, you can do as many um, trial and error as you want, and the, at the end of the day, you just have to print it out. And if it doesn't fit, then you. I normally work with a pair of calipers, but all I had today was this roller. So, um, <laughs> you know, it could be a few meals off, which could be a problem. But I'm pretty happy with that. Like, I, you know, if I look at the case, it looks, it looks about right. And now there is a parameter you can add up here to make the curvature a bit better. So what's awesome about this is because it's parametric, um, you can regenerate it with different parameter sets. And I think it is Fn, I think it's Fn. Did it do anything? Did it render? Did anything change? Oh yeah, good, okay. So that's increasing the resolution of these cylinders. So now when that 3D prints, the curvature will be much better. One millimeter is both quite thick and it's also quite thin. When it comes to 3D printing, uh, two mils is a good is a good sort of basic thickness. But I think I'll get away with it because the duct doesn't support anything. It's just airflow. And I guess the other question is, um, so it's mounted like that. <clears throat> Through that gap should be where the GPU heatsink is, where those those fins are. But what I've noticed is the back plate of the GPU gets quite hot. And so if I thought, um, let's put it one centimeter up, then in theory I can just change that one number and it will open up a little bit more. It might be worthwhile for my first prototype to err on the side of caution and just make it a bit bigger just in case I've stuffed up a measurement somewhere. Um, less chance of anything going wrong. So I can actually, um, I am going to try printing this now. So I'm going to go and switch on my 3D printer. Hold on. I probably don't have enough um, 
plastic filament in it, I might have to go and grab another roll. So I have a 3D printer uh, over there. It's, uh, it's pretty okay. It's, uh, this 140mm fan duct is, is really borderline for 3D printing. Uh, the bigger the part is just the, the chance the low percentage of error will eventually cause a problem. Uh, but anyway. So we're going to render that. So OpenSCAD is doing its thing. It's generating a final mesh. That to me looks okay. We're going to export that as an STL. I have a directory called build in here. Object may not be a valid two manifold and may need repairs. Okay, that's bad. <coughs> That means somewhere in my model there is a, it could be that, I reckon it could be that. Yeah, see what, what you can see through there is it's actually not connected. Um, some. Something is not quite right with the way that has actually worked out. But that's actually not probably, yeah, I don't know if it's that, I mean, it could be. Um, so what it means is basically there's a gap in the mesh that it, for some reason it couldn't resolve. And it's probably just because I haven't done something here. Like, uh, in fact, this shouldn't make any difference, but um, And the other thing I could try doing is making this. Oh, uh, you know why? It's because I have a cube, which is 140. And I'm cutting out a cylinder which is 140. It means there's some zero width polygons, basically. Uh, what I need to do is either make my cube like ever so slightly bigger, or make this like 140 minus something like that. So yeah, if I just, um, I think I can explain it. Uh, if I get rid of that part and I don't have that, you'll see like in the edge here, it's it's zero width. Like it's literally a zero width wall and that's just impossible. Like it's physically impossible to, to have that. And so when you try and have a mesh that represents that, um, because this is computational geometry, I guess it just goes, it's impossible. There's like a gap. Um, and so essentially, if we do that, then we give that wall some thickness, even if it's just tiny. And that is probably sufficient to mean that we don't create a broken mesh. So let's just try that. Hopefully, and I kind of don't like the fact that shows up inside there either. Um, it kind of seems like really ugly. What we could do is the this part here grill let's just go zero zero and move that what is it two mils one mil two mils ah wrong direction Just insert that. Because that's also kind of ugly that there's a ring in there now.
Let me just check the 3D printer is coming online. Uh, Octopi. has happened to my Raspberry Pi? Is it working? Oh yeah, here we go, it's come up. So here is my OctoPi interface and we're just waiting for it to figure out I don't care about any of this stuff. I just want it to connect. Awesome, so we'll start heating it up. Uh, okay, how to fix this edge. So the problem is if I move that up, i.e., what it was originally, the edge of the plate like comes through. So one way I could do that is I could actually Take the bracket and I could subtract the duct shape from it. So that means my bracket is actually having that duct shape carved out of it. So um, that should no longer be an issue. Now, those edges there, I hope they don't cause issues. I guess they could, but let's hope they don't. Especially since those two sh shapes. Uh, so what's really interesting is OpenSCADE uses this library called Seagull, Computational Geometry something. This is, let me just look it up. It's a C++ library for doing computational geometry. I was really impressed when I had a look at it. So um, what it does is rather than just working with like polygons and triangles, it actually tries to uh, use a mathematical model of all the different boolean operations and um, it works them all the way through so you don't end up with like say uh, you know if you take a number and you add like 0.1 to it a thousand times you don't end up with a hundred well you might with floating point numbers you probably don't or there's some error that can creep in um, so you don't want to just end up like taking transforms of transforms of transforms of transforms of differences of unions of all this other stuff so Seagull is a pretty cool um, library that tries to deal with all those transforms in a computational way rather than just generating tons of meshes. I mean, it does generate meshes, but uh, I assume that um, it's clever about it. So I think that is good. Let's try rendering that. No, check validity. Yes, it says it's valid down there. That's awesome. And it actually looks quite nice internally as well. Better than before. So I'm going to export that as an STL. I'm going to replace that one. And now I'm going to pull up slice 3R. I don't even know if it's like working anymore. That, that software just changes every other week. It's now called Prussia Slicer. There's, yeah, I don't know. Prussia seems to have tons of money, so they forked it and they made it better. But now there's two versions and it's, I don't know which one to use, so. Uh, what did I call this? Where did I save it? R4 fan ductum. Uh, 
Oh, well, it's huge. <laughs> I don't know if my printer will handle it. Uh, okay, and we want to put that face on the bottom. Oh, man, I'm so sure I'm going to print this out and it's going to be like five mils too big or something. I have like wasted all that time and effort. Oh well, that's just how, how it goes. So, I guess one thing I could do to make this print a bit faster is I could change that base layer to one mil thick instead of two. Um, frankly speaking, for a prototype, the faster it prints and the less material you use, the better, even if strength isn't there. You can always print out, once you get all the sizing right, you can print another version. Uh, but uh, yeah, hmm, two mils. One mil is not very thick. I think I should leave it at two mils. Um, so this preview is pretty cool. You can look at all the slicing and I guess these walls are super thin. It's going to be like just one outer and one inner and one, yeah, one perimeter and one outer, which is, it's not very much, but fortunately the curvature is not too bad. So I think that even though it's kind of the unusual shape that could be a problem it's starting to get towards 45 degrees I guess in the worst case uh, I could just make it a bit smaller on that side right okay I'm gonna send that to my printer Okay, um, so it's up to temperature and I have this thing here, let's load it, two and a half hours, so I'm going to go to bed and the house is going to burn down. Seriously, don't print overnight, it's a bad idea. Uh, I've tried twice to print overnight and the first time uh, I woke one of my flatmates up because the printer just completely um, went, up. The, print, the printer was fine, the print job was not. Uh, it had just um, missed a layer and then it was just printing into thin air and then it turns into a bird's nest. So it's really a disaster. Um, but anyway, look, probably you've seen everything that is interesting right now. Watching a printer print is fascinating about the first three times you see it and then after that you're like, yeah, it's printing. Um, so I'll, I'll probably finish about here. You've seen everything uh, that I would normally do um, from code through to prototyping in terms of the 3D geometry and then bring that into Slicer and actually producing something you can send to a printer and really the, just what I need to do now is go and load some uh, I have only about maybe two meters of filament in there at the moment and I need to replace the roll of filament with new filament get the printer all ready to go and then I'll print it out and uh, if you follow me on Twitter um, same username I think or I'll, I'll put a link below I'll put some photographs up and then you can see what the final product looks like and uh I'll report back and see if it, I'll do some measurements of uh, noise and see if it actually makes any improvement at all. Anyway, look, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. I've been told to say that. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Excellent.